everybody, it's Jimmy Smith with the next episode of Fight Quest Stories. This one's about Hapkido. That was the next one we did in Korea. And the problem we had from the beginning with the Hapkido episode is we knew we didn't have a combative style. We knew we had a style that was that was fun, that was cultural, that might be might have some visually interesting elements, especially the settings we had. But there's no Hapkido World Championships. They don't have a combative style at the end. And if if you've watched the um, the other episodes of this, when I was in uh, China doing kung fu, the style I actually trained in was really wushu, which is not combative. But the final fight at the end was Sanda, or Sanchu, which is combative. So our way around that was, the first time was we had a, a style that wasn't combative, but the final fight we kind of had in a different style. So what I trained the whole time had very little to do with the actual fight I had at the end. That was our way around the non-combative style of Kung Fu we were doing. With Hapkido, we didn't have that option. The style wasn't combative, the training we were doing, and then the fight at the end wasn't combative either. So we had to figure out a way around that. So that's, that what, that's what led to a lot of the way the Hapkido show was shot. The things we emphasized with the Hapkido episode was there was no final fight that was going to be brutal and difficult and, and bloody and all that stuff. They just didn't have that. So I had had a little exposure to Hapkido when I was in college, when I first started doing jujitsu and taking up fighting and one of the guys I trained jujitsu with was a Hapkido guy, and he would teach classes there, and I went to a couple of his classes. So I had at least a passing understanding of it, and it was essentially like Taekwondo with more throws in it, is the only way I can describe it to somebody who's not that familiar with it. Uh, good kicks, but the issue was, why didn't we do Taekwondo? I've heard that a lot. You know, that's an Olympic sport. They have an actual point system that we could have done the final fight in. The producers just thought it had been done too many times. That people knew, hap- I mean, uh, Taekwondo well enough. And that we would do something different, which was Hapkido. But the trade-off was we didn't have a final fight that we could really um, get behind as that realistic. That was a problem. And it was the first time we had that in Fight Quest. We did other non-combative styles later. But this is the first time we did one. So what did we focus on? Well, if you haven't been there, Seoul in Korea is beautiful. It's one of my favorite cities in Asia. It's a lot of fun. But it's a beautiful, modern, big city. The people are friendly. Um, And I don't mean people in, like, Tokyo aren't friendly. It's just that the decorum in Japan is much stricter and much stronger. And if you try to talk to a stranger on the street in Tokyo, it's very difficult to do. Uh, in, In Korea, in Seoul, we didn't have that problem. We were in a market, and this little kid did... Taekwondo, and he showed us his moves. Uh, his parents were like, oh yeah, he does Taekwondo, and he goes, yeah, show him, and they, they showed, I mean, that wouldn't happen uh, easily in Tokyo. So, Seoul itself was beautiful. Uh, a lot of great temples and stuff there. Spent a couple days there in the beginning of the show, doing the street stuff and the scenics. Then I went up to the mountains. Doug stayed in uh, Seoul to do his training. So, a lot of the training, a lot of the emphasis even from our instructors, was they didn't want us to hurt anybody. And they didn't want us to, or me personally, because I was training with these guys. got to remember, I'm a head taller than most people I'm training with. I was just a lot bigger. Um, Also, they weren't fighters. They were good martial artists, and they had good technique and stuff, but not a lot had actually fought anybody. So the whole time we're dealing with this, how are we going to do the final fight? What's going to happen? In the meantime, we're doing a lot of cultural stuff. When I was staying up in the mountains, the way it worked was, they had this kind of camp up there with the temple that you saw these beautiful shots of the, the, the forest and the mountains and stuff. It was beautiful up there. But we stayed at this kind of camp thing, these bungalows. And with the family of my trainer, my instructor there, they had a cabin up there or something. And his wife cooked for us every night. And the food was amazing. Now, I'm from Southern California. I lived in L.A. most of my life. There's a huge Koreatown in L.A., if you don't know that. And so I'm used to Korean food. I'm used to Korean culture and stuff. And I think Korean food's amazing. I love it. And so we got home-cooked Korean food every night with little bowls with all the appetizers and stuff in it. And it was amazing. We ate like kings. And then one night while we're there, uh, eating there's a big deal, obviously. We're in somebody else's home. They're preparing food for us. I eat like a wild animal anyway. If you've ever spent any time with me socially, I eat a lot. 
I eat really fast. It's just I eat like an animal. And then I'm training up there, so I was hungry all the time. One night, we had this huge dinner. Uh, the instructor's wife had prepared us this, this huge meal, barbecue and stuff. And we're eating with all the other students. And, man, we ate a ton of food. One of those were like, you, I, was, I remember holding my stomach, going to bed, and I fell asleep. And a few minutes later, somebody knocks on the door, and it was our translator fixer person. And they said, yeah, one of the students went fishing for you guys. And they're chopping up the fish right now. And it's kind of a big deal. You, you know, you, you don't insult them. So you have to you have to eat it. And I went, all right. And I rolled out of bed and got up and staggered outside. And this guy was, he had fished at this river nearby and had this table set up. And he was chopping them into like these sashimi strips. And it was delicious. It was unbelievable. I sat there, I ate again. Ate another gigantic meal after I was so stuffed I could barely walk. Uh, but we ate like that a lot in Korea. A lot. It was absolutely fantastic. So the scenery was great. My teammates were great. The style itself was a lot of fun to do. A lot of spinning kicks and hook kicks and jumping stuff and a lot of stuff I'm not. I don't do that well and I'm not comfortable with. But it was fun because I was you know learning all this new stuff. I was doing the Bruce Lee foot sweep all the time, trying to get that down. That's why I spent a lot of time mastering. So to solve our final fight problem, and whenever there was a a a non-combative style. Or something where where we had to emphasize something else. You, t- I tended to work with the producers a lot more closely because we have to figure out a story. We have to figure out all right, the, f- the final fight not be might not be a big buildup. So what can we build up to? And a lot of it to me was was trying to learn new stuff and honoring my instructors who were a lot of fun. They were great people and my teammates by showing good technique. You know what I mean? And I got a little bit of that in the Savat episode. If you watch that one, there was a little, there was a little bit of that too. But we just had to emphasize a bunch of different things that didn't have to do with the, oh my god, I'm really scared of this blood and guts fight I'm about to face. There were plenty of those throughout Fight Quest. This just wasn't one of those. So, I, uh, we found a teammate of the people I was training with. And he was a Filipino cat. And he was a boxer. And so he had actually fought, and he had decent hands. And we used to box every now and then, you know, off camera, whatever, do a little boxing stuff. And he had good moves, and he could actually box. So we were immediately like, okay, that's the guy, because he could actually fight. I, You know, we could hit each other a little bit, and he wasn't going to freak out on me. The problem was he was really small. I was just way bigger. So the, the perception, the per- perceived disparity would make the fight seem not as good, because he was a lot smaller than me. But he was the only one with a combative background. So that was the guy we chose for the final fight. Not we chose, but like, okay, this guy should work. He agreed to do it and all that stuff. So that was kind of our way out. Also, at the end, we did some some breaking stuff and some forms and some stuff like that to emphasize the cultural. And it was the same thing we did with the Kung Fu episode. The Sonda fight at the end wasn't just, wasn't the only thing we did. I did this big, long staff thing that they didn't show that much of, which kind of pissed me off. It took me forever to learn that thing. And then they, they broke the stuff on my stomach. So there was a little of that in the Kung Fu episode, too. That when we had a non-combative style, we would, all right, okay, what can we do to, like, show the martial art that isn't a fight? Because the whole emphasis the whole time was don't hurt anybody. Don't, you know, my, our instructors were worried about it. My teammates were worried about it. I kept having to reassure everybody all the time that I wasn't going to hurt them. Um, so the way we kind of did it at the end was we made forms and katas and the board breaking and stuff like that to kind of show the technique. And then in the final fight... I don't remember exactly how we decided on it. I don't remember exactly how we we did it Um, in terms of it was kind of a point sparring thing, but we didn't keep the points. It was almost like we were trying to show the technique and and we were trying to hit each other. We're not trying to hurt each other. So it was almost like the Taekwondo point system, but with Hapkido. And I was trying to hit that foot sweep all the time. So little tiny things like that, and we made a fight out of it. But we kind of had to make it up because they, they didn't really have a prepared system. And if you've seen the episode, other episodes of this, that was a, an issue with the non-combative styles is they didn't have a final fight ready to go. So we had to kind of make something up. And, and a few of those times that happened. And trust me, I'll go into all those later. But with, with Korea, what stands out to me wasn't the style or, or the, the training itself, although we did do some good training and it was a lot of fun. But the cultural stuff we did around the fighting itself. The temple there was gorgeous. The mountains out there were gorgeous. The forest was amazing. The environment was incredible. I really enjoy Korea as, as a country, Seoul as a city. 
I, and I've been back there to call fights as well. Uh, for M1, I called a couple in Korea, and I had a great time. And the food was incredible, and we ate great. And I didn't worry about any of the things that would be issues in later shows, meaning I felt like, and, and in previous shows, you know, if you saw the Savat episode, I got kicked in the liver, and I feel like I got set up. One thing about this style is the producer and I, a guy named, who was working with me at the time, I think it was Jonathan Fermansky was my shooter there, um, shooter producer. We worked together to go, okay, what are we going to do to to make this a more interesting? All right, let's let's get into the cultural stuff and let's talk about this and that. And I'll get a shot of this temple. And so we worked together very well to try to make a show that didn't have that combative element. When you have a combative element, everything flows from that. You do hard training. You're you're you go through the emotions of a fight coming, and then all those things make the story. And then you fight, and then you win or lose, or you learn something. So without having that that core of the final fight, we had to build all this stuff around it. But I think they think we all did a good job in doing that. But there wasn't any of the behind the scenes drama. There wasn't any any of that crap. It was fun training, uh, trying to work on the hook kick, especially the sweep kick for hours and hours and hours and working with some kids who were really good guys. You know, the, the, the kids who I did Taekwondo with. They were really passionate about it. They really enjoyed it. They really liked it. They really liked learning stuff from me. I really liked learning stuff from them. And staying up the mountains was super duper peaceful and wonderful. So Hapkido might have been one of the most relaxing ones to film because of all those things. That the environment was great and the the people were great and uh, the training itself was a lot of fun. The the turn comes a uh, big one for the next episode. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Not a lot of, of, of background stuff to talk about with the Hep Keto episode. Like I said, there was a lot of drama. There weren't a lot of issues. But uh, it was incredibly fun to do because of where we were doing it and the people we were doing it with. And I really learned. I learned some good kicking techniques, too. They do a lot of stuff. Remember, nowadays, everybody does kind of the single pad target hitting with the feet. And I hadn't done a whole lot of that. And they taught me a lot with that. They taught me a lot and, and hook kicks and back kicks and, and the multiple the way you can kick with multiples. I've only done Muay Thai where you kind of load every single kick and you hit really hard. But I didn't have the, the speed of a lot of the guys that, of, that did have keto. And they taught me a lot about foot speed when it comes to throwing multiple kicks. And I really appreciated that. But the next one should be, if I'm remembering correctly, Indonesia. That's interesting. So uh, uh, Indonesia is coming up next. I'll try and shoot these a lot more. I'm having hip surgery. Uh, I'm getting a new hip in like a week. So I'm trying to get a lot out of the way because I don't know if I can sit down or what the rehab is going to be like or if I'm going to be in a ton of pain and can't do this. So I'm going to try to get a lot out of the way before then. But appreciate you, and the next one's coming soon.